Bruno Fonseca grew up surrounded by art and by artists. The son of a sculptor father and painter mother, he taught himself to draw at the age of 10. At 18, he set up a studio in Barcelona where he studied intensively with the modernist artist Augusto Torres. Tragically, his promise was cut short by his death in 1994. He was only 36. The new book, Bruno Fonseca, The Secret Life of Painting, includes many examples of his work during a very short life. Joining me now to talk about his work and his life are his brother and sister, artist Caio Fonseca and author Isabel Fonseca. Also joining me, a longtime friend of the family, author Edmund White, who's been on this program before. <coughs> I am pleased to have all of them here to talk about uh, this subject and this young man. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, tell me about your brother. Tell me, you know. Well, um, as an author, as, as, an, mean, as an artist, <laughs> as a friend, as a brother, as a... One of the most striking things about Bruno um, was how early his vocation for painting showed itself. Um, he, uh, most of us don't really know what we're going to do until the age of 30 or so. Um, so Bruno was unusual in that, and, and some of the contributing factors to that might be um, his disastrous career as a student. I mean, he was, he um, had dyslexia and had the usual problems of reading and writing and uh, also to stutter. And these, these things weren't so well understood in the early 70s. Um, the response of the school, a very good school, was to send him to a psychiatrist as if these difficulties were emotional difficulties. Um, but it's, it's, you could make the case that um, this sort of disposition um, would make you develop in certain directions and you know, his visual uh, sensibility was, was great. And um, perhaps even you could go so far as to say that the feeling of being an outsider, which he certainly must have felt, um, was good training for becoming an artist. Uh, Feeling of outsider because? <coughs> well, because he the, had, dyslexia because because he had the strong dyslexia at a time when it wasn't so well understood. Right. Um, he, he emerged as a wonderfully handsome man, but as a, as a young man, he was very tall, so early tall. And, um, at the same time, um, he began, as you said, from that early age to, while he had difficulty with the literary world, his increasingly fluence with the visual world gave him, at the beginning of his 21-year career, uh, the thread which he never let go of this visual vocation that he had. And by the time he was 18, and I joined him the year after in Barcelona, he uh, was completely immersed in uh, uh, the uh, study of the model and nature and museums and trying to, um, the discovery of the abstract in painting. And he, he called me up one day. He would say, Kai, I did this painting, and it has these red forms and these black lines and these, these green little shapes. And just before he hung up, and said, oh, and by the way, it's St. It's a St. George and the Dragon, and he hung up. But I think that's indicative because it shows that he was so uh, uh, immersed in the, in the plastic and the, the structural qualities of the painting that the subject matter was almost incidental to him. Uh, uh, what is it with your family that there's so much creative and artistic? We could have used a dentist or a lawyer in the family. <laughs> yeah, you could have. Or, or an MBA yes. graduate would have been good, too. In our family, being a lawyer or, or a banker would have been much more exotic than being a painter. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you would have stood out. A real rebel might have been an accountant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks. Exactly. But, yeah. Um, so, I mean, I suppose most people imitate their families. Although we weren't over-encouraged, which I think was a great mm. gift as well. I mean, there was no pressure. Well, did you think um, about being a painter at all? I thought about it, and your, then... Your mother, your two brothers? Um, no, I, I mean, we don't really choose, do we? I mean, things choose us, it seems. So I sometimes think they have a more But by fun. an early age, Bruno was getting art supplies. I was, I was fair serious with the piano. I was getting musical right. paraphernalia. And, and she was, was writing about writing it. tablets. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and Kina was in the theater. Uh, so no pressure, just suggestions. Yeah, right. <laughs> How long have you known them? For the sake of family. I've known Isabel for 15, 16 years, but I, actually I, I don't, don't know the other members of the family or I just met them this last summer. Yeah. And I never knew Bruno. What is it about the family, though? I mean, that notion of sort of creativity coming out of the, all of them. Well, I think one thing is that they're not, I mean, uh, their father was, was Uruguayan and who uh, himself was very linked to, to uh, European artists and, and of course, the two boys studied in 
Barcelona. So I think it, what's interesting is it's not entirely an American family. And it's a family that, that well, the two boys at least had this incredible sort of old master training in the sense that they, they went to Europe very young. I mean, your brother went to Venice when he was like 12 or something, didn't he? Yeah, Florence, he spent, uh, he was, my father allowed him to go for a, a week as a 13-year-old boy, in, alone in Venice, in Florence, in to Florence, see the yeah. museums. Yeah. Which at 13, you know, <laughs> you know that's amazing. Pretty incredible. And Bruno understood the, the, the sort of gravity of that. And he went and he studied. And, and, but I was, yeah. wanted to say, um, you know, what is it about the Fonsecas? I don't think it's so much uh, genetic or cultural. I think, if anything, there is a, if painting is a tradition, right. which it is for the last 500 years or so, if it's a tradition, not art in general, but painting as a specific uh, uh, line, um, that is something very alive in our family, this notion that there are things to be learned and after which you can go your own way. Yeah. And um, that united us in the intense five years that we shared in Barcelona. Let me take a look at some of these uh, paintings and we'll put them on the screen and people at home will be able to see them and, and have, especially you, Caio, talk about them. The Self-Portrait, 1985. This is a stunningly handsome young yeah. man. I mean, Obviously, a self-portrait is the most willing model, and yeah. Bruno did scores of self-portraits. And um, he, uh, it, he said it prepared him for all the other portraits. And sometimes in other portraits, you can see hints of himself. But yeah. he, he, he... This is 1985. Is it 1985? Yeah. And yeah. he would return again and again. And in fact, looking at the collection of all the self-portraits sort of chronicles his physical <laughs> development. Mm. Next, next slide is Still Life with a Knife, 1980. Well, this would be one of literally hundreds of still lives uh, that we did where we would, be, we would try to uh, get to the bottom of, the, of, the, of, the, of uh, a painting and try to distill it to its concrete elements. And what is more... It was a lesson, was it Yeah, not? it was a lesson, destroying the object to find the concrete elements that later he applied what he learned with still lives to more abstract. Was it ever a consideration that maybe you shouldn't do this, that you shouldn't do this, that we ought to have someone come in from outside and, and go through everything and put this together. You mean the book? Yeah. Because of obviously the our objectivity obviously is not perfect. it um, I think it would have been I think it evolved the process. I think that in the beginning the idea of a vanity project uh, being a family project was a danger, but that we brought in Karen and right. Alan Jenkins right. and it began to take on we began to see objectively more the value of his work, almost separate from our own brother. Uh, the degree of objectivity that it has is we're too yeah, close but to I, judge. But the, but, but the sheer pain, or was it a Actually, joy? It for me, it wasn't. Sorry, no, wasn't yeah, it? No, yeah. No, for me, I, I didn't find it a painful process. I found it a slow realizing that he is now, um, he's not just my brother. He's, he's a Was there a realization that he was more than I thought? Absolutely. That's, yeah, isn't it? Artistically, yeah. he was more mature than I realized. Yeah. He really took his art very seriously. Oh, yeah. I mean, studied hard. Yeah, absolutely. Wanted Focused. it badly. Yes, and lived for that. Yeah, he was very ambitious, and he, he was aiming for immortality, which is Well, one of the great, interesting the great. things is at the end of his life, four of his most important paintings are these war murals, which where he really does uh, cross swords with Goya, for instance. We'll <laughs> or, get to those at the end yeah. of this. Yeah series of tapes. Let me come have you talk yeah, about sure. it when we get there. Uh, next one is the nude, 1992. Yeah. I mean, Bruno was very ambitious in terms of his subject matters, but um, I'm convinced, and I think the title think of the ambition book... ambition runs rampant in the family. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, someone asked me, well, what does that mean, the secret life of painting? Yeah. Uh, to me, at least, that means um, that regardless of the subject matter that he would take on, a standing figure, a, a yeah. Goya-like scene, a, an abstract... Bruno woke up every day saying, how am I going to solve the problems of painting? And so he, was su he had such a facility uh, that he, would just, he, had, he could yeah. go from one subject to another. Yeah. Next slide is a portrait of Caio, <laughs> sick I, with the flu. This is only a brother would do this. 1979. I, I, I had the flu. I was 19. I just arrived in Barcelona. And instead of like, putting me in bed, he put me in a chair. <laughs> And he said, just, just stay there, get some rest. And he painted this portrait of me. <laughs> a free model. Yeah. 